The day I circumcised, they said I should open my leg, and I did what they said. My mother told me this is my passage to womanhood. He said, if you refuse to lie down, we will force you to lie down. So my dad bring some rope and tight me and hold me very strong. I could feel the blade cutting. With every cut, I was struggling. When I was shouting because the pain was too much. I couldn't breathe. I really thought I was going to die. We are to get up, They say it's tradition. Which type of tradition? I had been at the Guardian for 25 years. I was the investigations editor. We were doing really big stories, WikiLeaks, Iraq. I came across FGM and I thought, why if we're doing stories about people having their emails hacked, why aren't we covering the fact that 200 million girls and women are having their genitals hacked off? So we set up the global media campaign and our first backer was the UN Secretary General who launched us in Nairobi. Four years later, a small group of us left The Guardian and set up a charity dedicated to ending FGM, determined to do things differently. There's a huge anger in the activist community fighting FGM because the millions, and there is millions that has been spent on FGM, it's not reaching them. What we do with the global media campaign is reverse that. And a large proportion of our funds go to the grassroots. That's what makes us different. We searched for activists who were working on FGM, who were often survivors, who were already working in the field, and through the volunteers we could see the people who really had the passion. <laughs> but what we're doing is we're saying, let's trust that person who's been walking 10 miles a day to go to the remote villages to talk about FGM. They mightn't have a BA, they mightn't have an international development degree, but they are the people who's going to end FGM. Many people respect religious leaders and I know for sure if religious leaders can stand up with us, this thing will be a history. It's the activists on the ground who are going to go to their religious leaders and say, this is the reality of FGM to tell people to stop because they'll listen to you. First thing we do is we have a national gathering. We invite activists, religious leaders and journalists to a five-day media training academy. We start the academy with the doctor explaining exactly what FGM is and what it can do to the body of a girl. This is the first time that many journalists and religious leaders actually see what FGM is and it's this information they bring back to their communities. They changed my perception and I'm not going to let my daughter undergo FGM. The media can be revolutionary and the moment it's here, it's now. Activism is aided by tools to drive your story home. So what we're doing with media is we're saying, let's use the smartphones, let's use the WhatsApps, let's use the Google documents and create a new, faster way of getting action. And we are getting results. In a campaign for 10 years now, TV, radio, I didn't know how to use them. I used to knock doors talking to people and my work was never recognized. But now I can say I'm very confident. I've amplified my work through social media, Twitter, WhatsApp, Facebook. I've seen a lot of changes in my community since I've began engaging with religious leaders. Muslim leaders have delinked the Islamic religion from female genital mutilation, saying the act is sinful. The circumcision of women is not allowed in Islam. Many people are getting the message clearly. Using the media to end FGM is really, really, really very important. I must say it's been a revolutionary journey of discovery for me as I've learned so much about the media and I've been exposed to the digital world. So far I've appeared in more than 10 TV stations and radio stations in Nigeria reaching 150 million people. There's a whole generation of young women, they've got the skills, they've got the technology, they've got the heart, they just need to be supported. 
a week doesn't go without an FGM story being aired. It has made a big difference. So far, the message has reached over 870 million people, with activists like Ifra Ahmed working not only locally, but internationally too. The activists aren't afraid to go for change at the very top. Jaha Dukre in the Gambia, after an 18-month media campaign, finally met with her president, who for 23 years had never mentioned FGM. Three days later, something extraordinary happened. As from today, the FGM is banned as from today from the surface of this country. I want Gambia to know how proud I am and how happy I am. This is a revolutionary moment. This is a whole new era of women who can use social media, women who can set up communities and organize themselves. The Global Media Campaign is about supporting them. They are the ones who are going to end this, not us.